Hello and welcome to another episode of the Tejano Traveler. I'm your host Wally and today we're taking a look at the Texas Tropical Trail and all its wonderful highlights. Starting off in Cotula, right on 35, we get to learn some bit about Mr. Cotula and LBJ where we first started teaching. Which brings us down to Laredo and San Agustin Cathedral with its wonderful plaza and its Republic of the Rio Grande Museum because the area once declared itself its own country. You can learn more about all this at the Border Heritage Museum and at the Republic of the Rio Grande Museum. Laredo is also home to the former Fort McIntosh. There used to be a fort here and the cemetery is still there as a reminder. The area also has a co environmental center where you can see some alligators. And my namesake, University, TAMU. I'm so glad that those hogs are still there, those javelinas. And if you want to learn more about water, then the Laredo Water Museum is for you. And then there's some typical Laredo places you should go to, like the library and the glass kitchen and the cheeses at the middle school and this cool art installation. You can also go to Lake Casablanca State Park, which is my home park. It was the first park I ever went to because I was there. And there's my mom. Hi, mom. It's got a pretty cool little mission style place up there. You can go for some pretty cool hikes. And then just following the river along Rio Bravo, you get to see the mighty Rio Grande as it winds down into the valley and into the Gulf of Mexico. There's several places where you can catch it, and it always looks awesome. It always looks majestic. We have San Ignacio, Texas, which has plenty of old buildings made out of rock and stone, plus a pretty cool little plaza that reminds me of Mexico. And then you reach Zapata, Texas. Zapata, Texas is a home to a really cool museum that showcases a lot of the local history. You get to learn about a lot about the Falcon Dam and Falcon Lake and the Zapata area. Speaking of Falcon Lake, if you go to Falcon State Park, you can enjoy the lake when it's there because it does get hot and it does get a lot smaller. And this is your typical road view. Then we arrive at the Roma Bluffs. You can see Mexico on the other side looking nice and wonderful. And it also has a pretty cool historic area. Rio Grande City has a replica of the Grotto of Lourdes and this pretty cool mural at one of their buildings. You can also cross the Rio Grande on this Ebenos Ferry. It's only hand-pulled ferry in the United States. And get a look at the historic little Lomita Chapel. And then you reach Sal del Rey, which sometimes has a whole bunch of water in it because it's not dry enough. And then once it dries up, it turns into salt. And people have been getting their salt here for thousands of years. It's pretty cool. And it cracks when you walk. It's all part of the lower Rio Grande Valley National Wildlife Reserve. And I came here to the other side. It's called East Lake, and I nearly died, but this turtle saved me. And then the... South of the valley is also home to the world birding centers. The first one was Roma Bluffs. The second one is the Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands, where you can go and get your birding fix. Plenty of birds to see. And then we can learn some more South Texas history at the Museum of South Texas History in Edinburgh. They got everything from prehistoric times to conquistador times to Native Americans to Pueblos and everything in between. It's pretty awesome. And you can also come to the Basilica of Our Lady of San Juan del Valle which is pretty popular amongst pilgrims. They come here asking for forgiveness, asking for miracles, and it's a pretty cool place to come and just enjoy the vibe. And right across the street from there is the Govan Stained Glass Museum, one of Texas's newest museums, and it's awesome. It's dedicated to stained glass, and the art is beautiful and amazing. While you're here in McAllen, make sure to go to Quinta Mazatlan to see how the rich people used to live and get a look at some of the art that's in there and hiking trails. Also a pretty cool restored old Hidalgo pump house. You get to learn about irrigation and the world's largest killer bee, which is in Hidalgo because that's where killer bees came in to the United States illegally. And then we have Santa Ana National Wildlife Refuge where they have a rope bridge, which is pretty cool. Now we're going to be looking at some of our state parks along the Rio Grande Valley. This is Benson Rio Grande Valley State Park, and it's perfect for birding and looking at animals like this javelina and this Baltimore Oriole and Green Jay. And please take a bike when you go there because it takes forever to walk through it. Then we have the Llano Estero Grande State Park, which is 
perfect for more birding. They have a levee separating the river and some cool boardwalks. And close by is the Iwo Jima Monument State Historic Site. It's pretty cool. It's a copy of the original. And some more birding at Arroyo Colorado. If you're extra quiet and just sit down, you get to hear a lot of them and they come out little by little. Now we reach Brownsville for the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception and the old Brownsville City Cemetery. Now Brownsville is chock full of museums, especially history museums. You get to learn a lot about local history, which is part of our national history and international history. So it's pretty cool being here. There's a Porfirio Diaz car apparently, but there's several museums just dedicated to that and the museum dedicated to just clothing in Latin America. Then there's a Gladys Porter Zoo. It's one of my favorite zoos. I was shocked to see how many animals it actually had and they were just out and about doing their thing. And then the Brownsville Museum of Fine Arts was just showcasing Lucha Libre when I was there. And I love Lucha Libre, so it was a very nice surprise and I got to see a lot of my old favorite wrestlers mass. We live my childhood. We have Palo Alto National Battlefield. The first war of the Mexican-American War took place here. United States won. And we keep winning, hopefully, in the U.S. men's national team. Yay, Team USA. And then the next day, the battle continued over to the Saca de la Palma battlefield. Almost down the street. That takes us to the Saca de la Palma State Park, where you can do some more birding when it's actually wet. It was pretty dry here during the summer, so there wasn't much to see, but it was still nice going there and enjoying some of the trails. And then we reached one of the south southernmost point of Texas at the Sabal Palm Sanctuary. We can see all these cool palms. And then the Palmito Ranch Battlefield, which was the last battle of the Civil War, which took place after the Civil War ended. Which brings us to Boca Chica Beach for some birding and to see the mouth of the Rio Grande. There it is. And it synced over to the other side to be in Mexico. Ha, illegally, allegedly. Anyways, then I headed over to Port Isabel to see the Port Isabel Lighthouse, a very historic place. Get to learn a lot of the history of the area at the Port Isabel Historic Museum. Then I took the causeway over to reach South Padre Island, which is very different from Padre Island. Padre Island is more nature. This is more party and fun. Plenty to see and do souvenirs beaches, fun, surfing, seafood. It's all a great place. And then you finally get to do some birding, which I love. This was my favorite birding center on the world birding center circuit because I love looking at birds. And they have a pretty nice sea turtle rescue operation going there too, where you can look at some of the injured sea turtles and Bob's world, which is just weird. Then we reach the Laguna Tascosa National Wildlife Refuge as we start heading back up. There's plenty to see here. Some of the animals are hidden because it's pretty, it's pretty hot during the summer. But now we're into some history at the Kennedy Ranch Museum in Sarita, Texas, which if its walls are filled with murals, definitely worth a visit. And the Don Pedrito Jaramillo Shrine in Falfurias. Everyone appreciates Don Pedrito and everything he's done for the people. Folk hero, folk saint. Now we reach Alice, Texas, which celebrates Jose de Escandón, the first governor of Nuevo Santander, which is the area of South Texas and Northern Mexico. And then we're in Kingsville for a cool museum for kids. And the King Ranch Museum, which you're not allowed to take pictures in. But you can go on a King Ranch tour. It takes you around the area, you get to learn a lot of the history, ranching history, horse history, cattle history, and then go to the leather shop down the street and try on your cowboy boots and cowboy hats. And we find that rich Corpus Christi, the jewel on this gulf, or something like that, where we celebrate Selena and Loteria and Whataburger. Whataburger is delicious. Don't let anybody tell you it's not, and this is a replica of what their original Whataburger looked like. You can go to North Beach, which people hate, but it's actually a nice little touristy place. You can get to watch the ships. They've got a museum of South Texas where you can get some pretty cool art and you get to see this guy all over the place. 
You get to see some old art and some new modern art. It's a good combination. And the Texas Museum of Asian Cultures, where you can get to learn about Japan and Thailand and China and all those places, and then head over to the Corpus Christi Museum of Science and History, where you get to learn about some local history of the area, such as the Karankawas that used to live here, and then taking some of the science and malacology and fun that is involved with our Gulf Coast. Then we head over to the Texas State Aquarium, which is a pretty cool aquarium. It's grown a lot since you first probably came here. It's got a whole new section, and it's got a sloth, and it's got sharks, and it's got dolphins. Everything you would want in an aquarium. And then you can go to the USS Lexington Floating Museum aircraft carrier, which served in several wars. Look at those gun turrets, and you get to sit on the captain's chair. What more could you want? And while you're there, head over to White Cat Beach and enjoy the sand and the surf and just take in some of the sun and also head on over to Padre Island National Seashore. Look how peaceful that looks. You can explore the dunes and the waves and the beach and then head on over to Mustang Island if you haven't had your fill of beach fun. You can walk the jetties, get to look at some of the sea life, get to look at some of the birds and enjoy some more sun and surf which is what I've done. Which brings us to Port Aransas. Get to walk the jetties, enjoy more sun and fun and beach. Get to look at some historic sites and do one of my favorite things ever, which is birding. It's always been a pretty fun thing for me to do. Even though I'm just in my late 40s, people say I should be in my late 60s before I get into birding, but whatever, it's fun. And then take the Red Dragon Pirate Boat. Yes, it's for kids, but they take care of their adults. You know, that's good. And then to get out of there, you take the Port Aransas Ferry, which is like a five-minute ferry. Which takes you to Rockport, Texas and Fulton, Texas, where you can see some small museums that talk about bay history and bay sciences and bay ecology. It has got some pretty cool exhibits if you go there and you can take a look at the marina and everything. And then the Fulton Mansion State Historic Site, which is a pretty cool mansion. We also have Goose Island State Park, where you can go for some fishing and some camping and some hiking. It's home of the big tree, which is the second biggest tree in Texas. There's one out there that is bigger, but nobody tells you where it is. And right across the bay is the Aransas National Wildlife Refuge, where the whooping cranes come during the winter months. So I guess I have to come back and see them whooping cranes. We're finishing off with Lake Corpus Christi State Park, which is a pretty cool park to go fishing at. It's one of the great CCC parks. Um, they built a lot over the years and then Choke Canyon State Park where I saw more than 20 different bird species. It was amazing. Everywhere I looked there was a new bird. I was so excited. I need to get better at photography though. And then the world's biggest watermelon and Hebronville which is a pretty cool little town. It's got this Scots um, school there and then Breer which is home of the world's largest rattlesnake and Crystal City which loves its um, spinach and it's also had a new Japanese internment center. Anyways, that's the Texas Tropical Trail for you. Hope you've enjoyed watching it. Hope you've enjoyed traveling and I hope to see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.